McShakey FPV says, here's a question. I flew in the mountains yesterday and had some metallic rocks get into my flight controllers, motors, etc. at takeoff and had to disable immediately. The motors kept spinning even though I had disarmed. Okay, that's bad. Um, I uh, That's hard to know what causes that, but anytime you get metallic rocks and stuff into your quad, you know, stuff could be weird. There's a lot of protection against the ESC spinning the motor when it's not told to. So it's hard to imagine what could cause, like, that's a pretty suspicious sequence of events. Um, it happened. It shouldn't have happened. And it's concerning that it happened. Uh, but I don't know what to tell you other than be suspicious of that quadcopter. What you, what you shouldn't do is... Be like, oh, that was weird. <laughs> okay, well, and then, you know, have it eat your face off. Okay? Uh, understand that this quad has now, you know, you know, like you watch a, you watch a, a, a horror movie and they're like, I think I'll go into the woods by myself to drink alcohol, even though I'm underage. And you're like, well, they're clearly going to get murdered. Like, how do they not know? Well, this is your moment. This is your moment where your quadcopter has said to you, I'm going to eat your face someday, maybe. And so a lot of times there are warning signs. And then, and then you know, you post a picture of your, your bloodied face on Facebook and be like, don't be like me. And it's like, well, this is your chance. This is your moment where your quad has said, hey, I'm willing to spin the motors when I'm disarmed. Like that should never happen. That should never happen, right? Like never. So if it sort of kind of happened once, you need to take that seriously. Now I'm not saying you should just be like, all right, well, I'll throw this quad in the trash and never fly it again. I'm just saying, treat it with some, some uh, precaution. That's the best advice I have for you. Uh, Alan wants to know, What's the best way to mount a GoPro bones on an 8S build? I'm not sure how the battery voltage relates to mounting the GoPro bones. I currently have a Foxier H7 with dual 10 volt. Oh, it's the ba it's the back. I was told it was best to use an external back. Okay, well, I'll tell you. Oh, I don't need to go get one. I'll just show you. Um, So what I have done in the past is buy one of these and uh, cut basically cut the USB off and put a GoPro Bones power cable on, solder it on. Now I that's fine. This works fine, except that's not gonna oh, that's not gonna work on ADES. Oh no. Yeah, you're uh you're you got a problem. I see the problem now. I see. Um cuz that only takes a 6S balance plug. Okay, none of the tr the typical solutions will work for you. You have to get like an an, an a voltage reg Jesus Christ. Can you not run it off the Does the bones take 5 volts only? Oh my god. It does, doesn't it? Between 5 and 27 volts. Okay, so uh, Super Deluxe is correct that you should not just give it 6S, that the, uh, that the internal regulator will not like it. So what about running it off the 10-volt regulator on your flight controller? Why not do that? Eh, would that work? Okay. Well, that's what I would do. Uh, well, I would run it off the 10 volt, maybe the five volt, probably the 10 volt. Um, just don't run it off of, don't run it off of battery voltage. You could also, as Ghost Branch FPV suggests, get an ex, uh, uh, an external five volt regulator. Like a, you could buy one from Pololu if you want to spend, but way too much money. I mean, uh... Alan says, I was told that 10 volt would interfere with my DJI 03. I don't see how that's possible unless the 10 volt regulator just isn't like big enough. 
I mean, is the 10 volt regulator at least like two amps? I think you would be okay, but I haven't done the math. So maybe I'm wrong. If you need an external regulator, you just have to buy one. Um, okay. Now I see how mounting the GoPro bones on an ADS build relates to the voltage. What are some of the difficulties associated with SPI based express LRS? And is it worth adding an EP2 serial antenna to get around those issues? Um, the main difficulty with an SPI based receiver is that you can't flash it to a new version of express LRS the way that you flash other receivers. With an SPI based receiver, the version of express LRS that's on it is linked to the version of Betaflight that's on it because the SPI code is built into Betaflight. So if you have Betaflight 4.3, then that typically, although it doesn't have to be this way, but that was released with Express LRS 2.x and Betaflight 4.4 was released with Express LRS 3.x. The problem with this is that Betaflight updates a lot less frequently than Express LRS does. So the SPI code base is always some months or maybe more behind what the serial receivers are running. And when you get a version shift from like 2.x to 3.x or 3.x to 4.x, suddenly, if you have an SPI receiver, you simply can't bind to a module running the new firmware. Um, this is all just a giant pain in the ass. There are other limitations. SPI receivers can't run the highest packet rates, but that's not like the end of the world. Just the firmware management though is just a giant pain in the ass. and there are also some performance issues where like if the processor gets overloaded, then the link may fail safe. All in all, I think SPI based express other receivers were just a mistake. And most manufacturers are realizing this and moving away from them. If you had a quad with an SPI based receiver and you had it working, then okay. But if I wouldn't like, I would, I would try to avoid them and I might like if I couldn't get it to bind because it had the wrong firmware version on it, I might just go screw it and get a serial based one. We got a $5 super chat from Glendon Blunt. My Radio Master Express LRS receiver has two antennas. Do I need to use both? And if so, is there a proper orientation? Thanks for all you do. Uh, you don't need to use both, but you paid for them. So you may as well use them. There's two, there's several different ways to orient those antennas. One of them, is to put the antennas at 90 degrees to each other. Okay. Now you can do that like, so like at the back of the quad, some people will put like a horizontal one at the back and a vertical one, like up at the front off a side standoff, like Vanover does that. The other thing you can do is you can put them like 90 degrees to each other like this, like a V, like for example, underneath the arms or mounted like that. So, um, there's various ways to go about it. The other, other way to do it is to put one in the back and one in the front. If your cables are long enough so that when you turn around to come home, you, you still get good, excuse me, good coverage.